Good morning. It's, it just takes a little getting used to. I'm not, not quite used to uh, steering this thing yet or anything, but okay. Welcome to United Church. For those of you new today, I'm Reverend Mary Lynn White, and I'm those online. Can everybody hear me all right? Am I sort of coming in and out? Or? I'm going in and out. Okay. Uh, as you can see, I'm not my usual self. <laughs> um, I injured my left ankle on Wednesday at lunchtime. Uh, so, once again, I thank God for this beautiful sanctuary that's accessible, the whole church and for the chancel area in particular being accessible. <laughs> you don't know how much that means when you're, you know, when you've got an issue and you, you have to uh, actually use the ramp because you can't get up any other way. So, thank God for all of that. Besides, I think to be fully accessible is to be more fully welcoming. On behalf of Woodlawn United Church, I offer sincere condolences to the family, friends, and work colleagues of firefighter Captain Billy Marr, whose funeral service will be held here this afternoon at 2 p.m. It will be live streamed for not attending. Not, I don't think I'm sitting on this. I'm not sure what, why it keeps going in and out. Okay. Even though I will be working from home over the next few weeks due to my injury, I will be here for worship on Sundays and I will lead the Word in My Heart Bible study. And the, the next one is this Wednesday, April 17th uh, at 11 a.m. in the Sam's Room. The first Sunday of the month is always Food Bank Sunday here at Woodlawn. But I believe we, we may have missed announcing that this month. So the East Dartmouth Christian Food Bank takes place each Thursday in our Heritage Center next door, and they greatly appreciate all donated non-perishable foods, as well as financial donations. So please know that donations are accepted at Woodlawn any time, and thank you for your kindness in supporting this important outreach ministry. Now... Today, after worship, you are cordially invited to our fellowship time down in the brick hall. That's the room underneath this, this sanctuary. And uh, you will be offered tea, coffee, and some goodies. And we thank our hosts, Lisa Allen and Margot McLeod. Does anyone have a short announcement they would like to highlight? Just a quick announcement. Um, on May 26th, which is a Sunday, Tabitha is hosting a fashion show, and most of you know, we've had them in the past, Elegant Steps from Truro has a lovely fashion show, and it's a dessert afternoon, so tickets are available in the office or from me, and then in, after May 7th, Terry Gnu will have tickets as well. So let me know if you need tickets. Thanks. My first announcement isn't why I was really coming up here, but if any of you have phones that you want to text your friends and tell them that the live streaming is not working this morning, uh, the problem just occurred, so we really aren't live streaming. It is just live here. The second thing I wanted to talk to you about is that uh, this is a really big day for us. Not only is this service a great important uh, day and, and event, but at two o'clock this afternoon, we are actually hosting a really big funeral for Captain Billy Marr, who's a firefighter who died on April the 6th. We were contacted early in the week to see if uh, we could help them out. So we've agreed to host uh, what initially was the overflow. Now we're hosting the actual service. Uh, so it'll be here at two. This is going to draw firefighters from basically across Canada. Uh, they've told us to expect anywhere from a thousand to fifteen hundred people. Now they all won't be in here, um, but one of the things that that we're going to need some help with after our service this morning is to bring up a number of chairs. We're going to try to reconfigure uh, the seating to get as many seats as we can up here in the sanctuary. 
Um, downstairs, it will be basically a, a stand-up uh, situation where we'll broadcast the system, hopefully downstairs. And there is an overflow at St. Thomas More Church where if we can get our uh, live streaming working again, we will be live streaming to them and, and everybody that's in that congregation or that church will be able to take part in the service. Um, so the help afterwards is a, it will be a really big thing. Downstairs, again, after the service, there will be a, a reception, a stand-up reception, where our UCW uh, people are providing the coffee, tea, and, and water. The ladies' auxiliary from the fire department are providing the food. Um, and we're going to be having our sound actually broadcast it outside on our outside speakers for all those who cannot get in will be able to hear the service outside. So they're pushing our technical capabilities to our limit today. Uh, and all we need to do is get the systems back working uh, the way it should. And the third thing, final thing I guess on this one, they are planning to close the street. There's going to be a parade that will have as many as 400 people in it a couple of fire trucks, 40 or, five, 40 or to 50 people in a band. They're going to assemble on the other side of Morash Pond, uh, come up, that's Guysboro, across Shawinigan, down Woodlawn Road, and then end in front of the church. The actual uh, coffin with Billy in it will be delivered to the front door in a fire truck. Uh, so there's going to be a lot going on. Uh, if you decide to come down, Park somewhere away, because once, once the thing gets started and the streets get closed, there's no getting in, no getting out uh, until it's all over. So I think that's it. And uh, like I said, it's a big day for us, and uh, any help that you can provide us after the service will be greatly appreciated. Thanks. Good morning. I'm Vicki May, and I'm a sacred dancer, and you are invited to be sacred dancers for an evening. That will be Wednesday, April 24th, from 6.30 till 8, in the sanctuary here. And the movements will be gentle and easy to follow. You just do whatever your body permits you to do. And I'll be just following my lead, so there's not anything to remember. We're going to do some familiar songs like Breathe on Me, Breath of God, and May the Road Rise Up to Meet You. And there will be other songs that won't be as familiar to you. And there will also be time for rest, reflection, and prayer. No experience is necessary. No registration is necessary. Just show up. And I'll be downstairs after the service if you have any questions for me. Are there any other announcements? Wednesday at 3, downstairs in the Brick Hall. 1.30 to 3. Is like an open house? Yes. Okay, 1.30 to 3, uh, time out for crafts. It's their final one of this season, and there are lots on display and lots of yummy goodies. Okay, that's this Wednesday. All right. To show we honor, acknowledge, and wish to nurture right relations with our Indigenous people, we will say our statement of reconciliation. As we gather in this place, we remember with gratitude that we live and worship on lands that are, by law, the unceded territories of the Mi'kmaq. Please stand as you are able for our call to worship. We are called to draw close to God to reach out and touch the divine. God is good. God is love. God holds us in the palm of God's hand. God's promises are steadfast, empowered by the Holy Spirit. 
Hope conquers doubt. The risen Christ lives. Please join in singing our opening hymn from Voices United, number 509, I the Lord of Sea and Sky. The Gospel of John tells us that Jesus called himself the light of the world, who gives the light of life. May the symbolic flickering flame of this Christ candle remind us that Jesus walks with us to illumine the path of love, truth, and wisdom, the path that leads to life, gives glory to God, and vanishes doubt. With Jesus lighting the way, we walk in the light of faith and commit ourselves to live the loving way of Jesus. Let us take a moment for sacred silence.
Let us pray. We thank you, loving God, for Jesus Christ, the light of the world, who leads us into the future with light and love. You have given us the precious gift of the risen Christ, who offers us new life, forgiveness of sins, and the assurance of his loving presence, for which we are eternally thankful. May our doubts disappear as we open our hearts to the movement of your Holy Spirit in our worship today. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the one who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Be seated. I'd like to call all the children and the young at heart to come to the chancel steps for some chit chat time. Hello, everyone. Welcome. So lovely to have you here. So I know I look a little different today. Because of my injured ankle, I can't get right down on the steps to sit with you like I normally do. Be what happened? Hmm. Well, let's just say I went over on my left ankle and fell down and had to have x-rays and all that. Okay, so it, it's going to be all right. No worries, right? But I do have to stay in my chair today just to be on the safe side. But there's one thing I can do in my chair and that is, I can talk. <laughs> yoo -hoo! I can read and write, too. If I had a pen, I could write. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. <laughs> so, I have something important to say, and here's what I have to say. Are you ready? Who said no? <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Yes. All right. I have wings. What do you think of that? What I have wings. Uh oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Say that again. They are invisible. Hmm, that's a good answer. If I could easily turn around, I would show you my back. Do you see anything? No, you don't see anything. Okay. Well, so does that mean you doubt that I have wings? Angels have wings, though, right? <laughs> All right, so that means you doubt that I have wings, correct? <laughs> okay, let me show you my wings, then maybe you'll believe me. They're very heavy. Now, do you believe me? Okay, I do have wings. They're just not attached to me. <laughs> and I do have wings, but it's kind of an un unexpected way of having wings, isn't it? It's not quite normal. All right, so I have wings in a different place, in a different way than what you would be expecting. But now you believe me, correct? All right, that's good. Because eyewitnesses, and do you know what an eyewitness is? 
Anybody? Yeah, somebody who's there to witness something, see something, touch, feel, whatever, firsthand. That's an eyewitness, right? And they use their senses. We have five senses, and that, that's how they can tell something is true or real. Do you know what they are, the five senses? Yeah? One more. Sorry? Oops. There we go. <laughs> okay. So, yes, touching, tasting, seeing, hearing, and smelling, right? So if you can use your senses, even just one of them, you can usually tell that, that whatever is in front of you is real or is happening, right? Okay. So back in Jesus' day, and that was like over 2,000 years ago, People did not believe other people when they said they saw Jesus after he had died. Now, we know that Jesus died on a Roman cross. He was put in a tomb with a huge stone rolled in front of it. And he laid, he was, his body was in there for like three days. But then when some women went to the tomb to bring spices, guess what? Yeah. There was nobody there. The body was gone. Okay? So they didn't know exactly what had happened. But then Jesus appeared. And the women were told by angels that Jesus had been raised to life by God. And, uh, and that he was out there. And he was waiting to, he was walking around talking to people. Anyway, some people heard Jesus talking, and he walked with them, okay? But when they went to tell the 11 disciples, guess what? They didn't believe those people because they didn't experience it for themselves, right? So finally, Jesus appeared to his 11 disciples. They were in a locked room, but he appeared among them, and he started talking to them, and they were afraid, they had still had doubts. They weren't sure if it was him or not. So he said, well, touch my wounds. He had nail wounds in his hands and his feet and a huge spear that was put into his side. Well, they were all healed up wounds now, but he showed them his wounds and he said, touch them so they could feel the wounds, right? They could see him. They could hear him. They were not going to use all their senses, but he did say... Perhaps if I ate something, you would believe me. So he ate some broiled fish. Finally, they did believe that it was Jesus and that God had actually raised him from the dead. Okay? So the eyewitnesses of, those, of, of um, that experience of seeing Jesus after he had died, but now he is alive, they are our solid proof. It is all written in our Bible, in the scriptures. And down through the centuries, we know that that actually happened because they were there and experienced it. So let's not doubt, but believe that Jesus is alive. He can be on the earth. He can be in heaven. He's just in a different form. He transformed into something new, okay? And he wants us to not doubt, but believe. And we are blessed when we believe that Jesus is alive today and works in and through us through his Holy Spirit. So in a way, it's just like my wings that were hidden in my chancel chit-chat bag. Because just because we didn't see them doesn't mean they didn't exist, right? So today we have faith that Jesus lived, loved, and died back then, but then God brought him back to new life. Don't you think that's pretty awesome? That God has raised Jesus to new life? And so we have faith that Jesus walks with us today and helps us to make good decisions and to show others that we love them by being helpful and good the way God made us to be. So before Maggie teaches us a new refrain, a new hymn and verse of this new children's hymn, let's pray. So just repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for Jesus 
and his disciples, who gave us solid proof that Jesus lives. May our hearts never doubt, but be filled with Jesus Easter joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Awesome. It's not on. Oh, now it's on. Sorry. All right. So we have a new children's hymn for the month of April. Does this book look familiar to any of you? I figured it might. Our children's hymn for the month of February, February, sorry, April. These months are going by way too fast. Is going to be number 132 from Songs of the Gospel, I'll Be a Sunbeam. I'm sure many of you, myself included, might recognize that one, but probably haven't heard it in a while. So we're going to teach everybody the refrain, and then for the verses, we'll play our instruments and we'll sing along to the words on the screen. So repeat after me if you don't know it. I'm just, I'm just going to say it. I don't want to sing in front of all you guys. So I'll just say it. So repeat after me. I'll go line by line. A sunbeam, a sunbeam. Jesus wants me for a sunbeam. A sunbeam, a sunbeam. I'll be a sunbeam for him. You all got that? All right. Take it away. Grab some instruments too. Go for it. <laughs> 